just wanted to show you a few things from the garden. So um, we've just planted these plants in, in the last month. So they're literally only in probably like three or four weeks. And just to let you, just to show you a little bit about the size that they get and just what you would expect if you're to be planting in this time of year. So these are all dug up and moved from Sligo, these plants. So they're actually going to be a lot smaller this year than normally. But they're quite old plants and we split a lot of them. So these marshmallows were actually probably one plant or maybe one and a half plants and we split them and um, split the roots when we were digging them up because they were so old they kind of came apart but it's fine they're still even small bits of roots and um, came back but you can see that they're actually going to probably only be about this height this year as opposed to their normal six foot or so and um, just while they're settling in because we got them in so late and the same with these indulas these elecampanes you can see this one's already starting to go in, into flower here and normally they would be about six or seven foot and um, so just the energy is going down into the roots right now so that's what you would expect but again these are just small clumps of elecampane which is the inula that we just um, put in and it'll all merge together and become one big mound of plants so just to give you an idea um, of spacing as well so down here we have some just some little uh, grandelias so all loads of respiratory herbs actually which is nice three kind of big clumps of them and this is st john's wort again and they were just like one that got left out so again they were just tiny uh tiny bits of roots that we got cut up and um, when your plants are so old and you're moving them you often would root divide them for their own health so we do that a lot um even every year we move plants and people are quite surprised by that so if a plant isn't happy somewhere in your garden just move it and take it up and there's a number of plants that we actually dig up and take up and we split the roots on purpose for the health of the plant and then we move it around so you're making more plants which is quite nice um, um, but you need to do it for some plants actually you need to do that every three years so um, arnica's there was a big storm here the other day the arnica's actually in flower and um, that's arnica montana there we won't be harvesting from then and um, again we'll probably harvest from them maybe next year these guys are going to spread and make a massive clump of arnica all over there and um, then they'll be much healthier so we won't harvest them this year um, I'll just bring you over to this side here just to show you so again these plants are only in the black cohosh he's in the wrong place he accidentally got put there so I'm going to take him out and these little um, sil um, salvia malcariza which is um, a Chinese plant so we grow a lot of Chinese plants here as well I'll just come into the bed here this is all um, vervain and these vervains, I should have taken a video of me putting these in because they were basically roots that had all been dug up from our place in Sligo and sitting in crates for months. And if you'd looked at them, you would have thought this, they aren't gonna come back to life. They were just dry sticks of roots with a little tiny bits of green on them. But I put them all in um, and they're amazing. So they're coming back. And again, they probably will only be about this tall this year. Um, just because they've been through a bit of stress and a bit of shock. Um, but then next year they'll come St. John's Award still in there. Next year they'll come good again and they'll be beautiful and tall and they'll still flower um, but um, yeah you would have been quite surprised that these guys made it. So we're filling in a lot of gaps here but the warts <laughs> these are going to get quite big. People always ask us every year why you leave so much gaps around your plants but they really do mush out and get quite large so um, not to crowd them too much. And here are lots of uh, goldenrods or solidagos and marrow roots a lot of these as you can see are oh my gosh they're really really neglected so we have hundreds of nursery plants that really desperately need to get into the ground so if you have a look at this one this is marrow root so um plant that um david winston herbalist from america talks about a lot he just gave a talk on adaptogens uh, in dublin and he gave a talk with us at herb feast this year in mayo and i think marrow seems to be one of his favorite um, adaptogens so a really amazing plant that we use for um, supporting the adrenals but um, as you can see we've got hundreds of these plants in from the nursery that are in dire need of going into the ground so I'm kind of cramming them in a little bit here but we'd rather have them in the ground this year rather than them die in pots you know so and we've closed the nursery this year so we're not selling any plants from the nursery so these guys just really need to get into the ground so I'm actually gonna plant them all in here these get quite big normally you would give marrow root a spacing of like a foot or foot and a half but I'm actually going to put them a bit closer and I will they're uh, perennials so I'll move them next year that'll be fine so we'll move them but all these roots obviously it's really root bound need all loosening out and then um, 
putting in the ground. So I'm just going to leave that guy there. Um, Come on over to this bed over here. A few nice things. We have Columbine, Solomon Seal, which is another plant used a lot more by American herbalists. It's just finishing, it's finished flowering already. More little rhodiolas I'm just sticking in to get them into the ground. This is Balata nigra, which is um, black whorehound, which as you can see is a, a neglected nursery plant from our nursery. So it really needs to get into the ground. There's another one, little Balata nigra there. It is alive. So I'm gonna really try and get that in. And we've got things quite close. Now we have some really big plants here that we were using as display plants for Herb Feast. This is a Ruta, um, and this poor thing has been living in this big pot for the last year, so really happy to get in in the ground. Um, some beautiful uh, Eupatorium Herbarians, gravel roots there, kidney herb, um, some gorgeous Yomogis here, quite a big plant. More Inulas. Uh, these guys are very busy Absinthium, Wormwoods, and they're really, really old plants, and again, seen me putting these in it was like I was planting a dead plant into the ground um, but they've come back to life so plants are really resilient you know you just need to give them a chance so here is a big clump of Artemisia vulgaris one of my favorite herbs um, and here's a lovely southern wood which you need to cut this back because this um, these old guys here these are its old growth from last year so we don't need that um, as I said, like plants are really resilient, they'll come back quite strong if you give them a chance. And these plants, if you think they were all so neglected um, this year because of our move, and they're coming back really well. So they just need a bit of TLC and a chance. A lot of people say to us that plants they buy from us from the nursery, oh, they didn't come back. You know, I don't know why this plant, but actually give them a bit of a chance. A lot of plants wouldn't come back, a lot of plants till even June. So, here's some licorice actually. So, again, there's a lot of things because of our move we didn't really label properly. And it's only now that these licorices are up and we were like, oh, there's all the licorice. We didn't know where they'd gone. So this is a lovely glyceriza. It's quite sheltered here. People wouldn't think you could actually grow Chinese plants like licorice here. But you can, they grow quite well. Um, another Chinese plant here, amazing for eyes. This is um, a chrysanthemum morifolium. These are gorgeous little black tucas. Tuberosa, which is wild lettuce, um, and these about a month ago they looked extremely scraggly, like didn't think they'd make it at all, but they look amazing, um, and they're probably going to go into flower now. They'll probably shoot up a big stem. It's the sap of it that's extremely pain relieving. Um, we use it for sleep, insomnia, and things like that. I might do a little video on that another time. These gorgeous cynaras, which are globe artichokes. So we this stick. We're under a bunch of ash trees here. So this is a kind of a shady bed, a little gorge in there, um, and some poke roots, another herb used more by Americans, by Falaka than us. This is a gorgeous little plant called Codenopsis, which is another Chinese plant, uh, Dangshen, and it's actually a bit of a climber. That's really stunning. I think I did a post on it another time. We normally grow it um, in the tunnels, but we don't have any tunnels up so far because we just been moving so um, we'll put a little trellis thing here some little sticks something for it to climb and it'll be happy here because it's actually really, really sheltered so again another Chinese plant that's going to do quite well here um, so I just wanted to show you just some, some Arcanonias there just to give you an idea of a bit of spacing of plants and some things are spread it was like that's a it's an organo there a beautiful organo and it's going to spread all over this oh gosh there's a, a little um, ephedra here which is another Chinese plant, a lot of people would have heard of Ephedra. It looks quite a sick, but uh, he'll come back. He'll actually come back really good. So we have a number of different types of Ephedras, and um, yeah, they do quite well. So be surprised. And this shaded um, section is quite nice for it. So just wanted to show you a little bit of what was happening in the garden at the moment. Um, some of these plants, I said, won't be at their full height and full beauty this year while they're settling in but I will do a few more videos from the garden <laughs> with the kids baby um, over the summer months. Thanks! Um, and including this inula so I'm just cutting things back this inula we had split up all the roots and we were put, planted into the ground and we hadn't expected it to get very big this year and it didn't 
it got, I was only got about my height, which is a good bit smaller, and then it should have been. So I'm cutting it back, and these leaves here will actually probably come again a little bit. They'll keep going, and then they'll probably die back down in about November. So I'm just chopping these ones back. Um, there's a number of things in the garden that we're probably going to cut back sooner. Um, and including this marshmallow here. So in other parts of the garden, we um, planted in other marshmallows and they're actually still quite full and quite bushy, but this one here, it's quite an exposed spot, exposed for it, and it's flopped over. So I'm gonna cut it all back now, um, earlier than would have been expected. Um, but as you can see, things got quite full in this bed in the last three months. So I'm gonna take you around some of the beds that I brought you around before in part one. And it is a bit of a mess, there's kind of mad things here, lots of black cohashes and all kinds of things stuck in here. But some of the things I'm actually keeping and saving for seed. So for example, this chelidonium down here actually ended up being a really nice, beautiful chelidonium specimen. So I haven't seen one like that in years. So I'm actually going to save, there's loads of seeds on it this year, and I'm going to save the seeds from that this year. So if you come around this part of the bed, it sounds like things have done pretty well. Or St. John's wort settled in quite well, and that, those clary sages. This is actually one giant catnip plant. So it was just a little self-seeded catnip that I found in a pot and I decided to just stick it here in the bed. And actually it's done really, really well. Um, I probably will harvest from this plant. It just had a big downpour of rain a minute ago, although it's still quite warm in summer here in the 1st of September. Um, so I will harvest from this catnip here, but I probably won't take all of it and I may leave some seed, save some seed from this plant too, because it's just one big gorgeous plant. It did really well. And same with this Bolotta Negra down here, which is our black whorehound. That's just one plant there that I planted in. And it was an older plant, so it was quite, quite a big plant. But it's done really well as well. It's actually coming to seed as well. You can see lots of uh, bees and bumblebees, honeybees and bumblebees are actually still feeding on the flowers, but it's coming to seed. And I'll probably save seed from this plant too. And come this way. This is another bed here that I showed you that I planted up. and. Um, quite weedy and there's a few things that are in the wrong place like uh, these figworts are kind of popping up everywhere they would have just been in pots that we've had and here's a little mugwort that's not supposed to be there and this hawthorn tree isn't supposed to be here this was here before we got here before we made the bed but we need to wait till autumn to move him and find a natural home for him um, but this skullcap here has done really well. We only use skullcap fresh and we um, cut it back a number of times of the year and harvest it. So um, I'll probably harvest this one more time this year and then it'll be cut back for winter. It is a perennial plant, but it needs specific type of care to grow well and to grow large amounts of it. But it did really well here. Um, and you come around here, there's some nice culver's roots. Um, two or three plants there that look good and some echinaceas, they always settle in quite well. And this was actually that vervain patch that um, I would mentioned in part one, that was just really little strips of roots of plants that wasn't gonna do well at all, but it's actually looking really good. Um, I didn't expect to get to its full height, but this is the height of vervain, um, and it's finished flowering at the moment. It's just a few little gorgeous flowers still on it, but it's actually finished flowering for the season, so we kind of missed it in this number of growing up through it so I'm going to pull those out and lots of nettles and things like that but I'm, I'm really pleased it did really well because it's quite sheltered here so I'm, I'm surprised it settled in so well so it's great. I love Verdane. Um, some goldenrods and Norris and some other Epimonians down here. This fever fuse finished for the season it's actually finished flowering and um, but it was a really nice plant too so I might save seed from this so I think this year we're actually going to be saving a lot of seed from our plants because we're just leaving them to settle in and they've all done so well and some of them have been really nice specimens of plants. This is the marrow root, the marrow plant that I've actually planted in. It's a little bit chock block here. I remember it was quite root bound and I was showing you I was planting them in uh, quite close together just to get them in the ground but I may actually dig some of these up and move them. And it's the root that we use and we wouldn't have been harvesting the root anyway this year but it's a bit too crammed. Usually they'd have a bit more space so I will move those plants too. So this bed here has actually gotten quite large, quite tall. We put a lot of tall things here because it's kind of along the woodland line. It's a shadier bed and we knew that. Um, but I'm quite surprised again how well some things did, um, including this lovely Leonorus, which is motherwort. Um, it did really well. There's actually only two plants here. And I can see there's lots of different types of bumblebees feeding on it at the moment. So there's one plant here and there's one plant here. 
and again I'm not going to harvest from these plants at all just wanted them to settle in and the seeds of this plant are gorgeous really there's little spikes around them and then there's a lovely green seed and it turns brown and in about another couple of weeks time when the seeds have turned brown you'll see loads of little birds sitting on the branches and the on the stems of this plant actually feeding off the seeds it's gorgeous so um, this plant in particular I may um, save seed from it and keep it keep it the seed to me instead of harvesting it. So this um, Eupatorium purpureum which is grabber root didn't actually do as well as we expected at all so I mean it's still a beautiful plant and um, but normally it would be at least a foot taller so a little bit disappointed but I did have a hard time this looks still looks stunning and it will come back again and um, we've this isn't a, a, a plant that we harvest from, it's a root that we use of this plant, but this plant has always been a display plant in our garden and as I said it's normally it's much taller, much more vibrant and much thicker, um, but it was a bit neglected, we lost it, it was living in a crate upside down for about two months and we did find it, it was one of the last things we planted in at some stage in June, so it has only been two or three months since then, so um, yeah it'll come back good next year, so just leave it, let it settle in. Um, and then round here there's more rutas and, and rapesias and I really don't know if you can see that there but it's a really big uh, Eupatorium perfoliatum which is bonus set here which is just finishing flowering and then this giant guy here is Yomogi um, Artemisia princeps which is the um, Artemisia that they use um, for moxibustion in acupuncture and a gorgeous big plant and obviously settled in here quite well it's quite it is sheltered here especially just near the trees here and um, it's a very fine plant but it's done it's done really well in this garden so um really happy about it we have a number of yomogis still getting the ground and um this one was one of the only ones we got in this year but we will get the rest of them in um over winter even yeah and then around here some marshmallows and a really lovely um artemisia absinthium which i was quite worried about and um, it's actually flopped quite a bit over the last month and um, it's as I said the 1st of September now and it pretty much rained all of August and things are starting especially the taller plants they're starting to get flattened down by the rain so this guy I didn't think he'd really make it this um, wormwood but uh, yeah he's done pretty well and yeah just kind of starting to flop over now so I'm probably going to cut him back pretty soon and there's some lovely little Chinese plants down the front Escutellaria bioclensis which is an amazing Chinese plant we use um, for allergies, particular intolerances. Um, yeah, so there's just a couple of things in there. This was the last bed that I showed you in part one, and um, which you planted up. There's a number of other herb beds over there, but um, this one I was showing you planting in a few things, including um, this guy here, which is another Artemisia, Artemisia aberanthum, which is southern wood, and um, it's done quite well, um, but it's being really swamped here by this mugwort which is Artemisia vulgaris one of my favorites so probably going to move this southern wood and um, this winter um, or definitely cut back this motherwort very soon it's just finishing flowering here at the moment and um, but did, did okay did well and um, the rutas and all kinds of other plants in there and um, this was the lactuca which was the wild lettuce which I showed you in the last video and it was quite spread around the ground it kind of spread like that um, and, but this is how tall it gets. It's getting quite sticky now. All the latex and the sap is coming out of um, the leaves and also the, the twigs and the stems, which is the part that we use. And this is as tall as your lactuca should get. So this is a sheltered spot for it too. And, and it's actually done, done really, really well. So it's finished flowering now and it's actually should have been harvested. I'm not going to harvest from it, but it should have been harvested um, probably about a month ago. So it's like three months in the ground, probably would have harvested it, yeah, maybe the start of August would have been the best time. Um, and down here, there's some gorgeous little agrimonias, which seem to be in abundance this year in the garden, um, really gorgeous plant. And it's just coming out of flowering and going into seed. And the seeds are actually some of my favorite seeds, um, are the agrimonia seeds. There's really cute little burrs on them. Um, and we didn't harvest some of this plant either but I may save seed from maybe this one here. I'll have to choose, I'll choose one. But there's two, just two plants here. So that was just some of the garden. I just wanted to show you, show you the difference between when we had planted in, in June, the first week in June, and now three months later, how big and bushy things have gotten. And um, as I said, we will be moving a lot of things. 
Uh, but they all recovered quite well, actually. Most things recovered quite well after a big move from Sligo. So I'm really happy about that. And I might do some videos from some of the other herb beds. Um, over winter even, I might do some seed safety videos or some other ones as well. Thanks.